Hello guys and welcome to another video series. This one is about the toolkit workflow panel, which has been to many iterations and is actually the whole reason why all of the other products exist. Um, I don't intend to go through all the features from top to bottom or uh, explain every single feature. I want to do this more of a manner of explaining with examples. Uh, so there will be many videos in this series. I don't even know how many and I'll probably keep adding to it. Um, and this first video, I won't show uh, much of it at all. So if you think I'm boring to listen to, then skip to the next one already. <laughs> But I want to give a little bit of a backstory to why it exists. Um, just simply because it's the reason that all of the other products uh, were created. So many years ago, I got into photography. And then some years later, I realized how important it was with good retouching. And there was not much information available. Uh, I think I bought some DVD uh, that was shipped through mail. I think I'm uh, exposing my age now a little bit, but <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> um, so I started to learn these techniques, very, very old school. Um, and then I saw that Natalia Tafarel was coming to Sweden which is where I live. So I immediately booked her workshop and it really opened my eyes to what good retouching can do. And uh, we became really good friends actually. So she, much of her input uh, has helped me through the years. And I'd like to think that I also provided her with some input. Um, but to give the backstory of why a panel, uh, when I got home and I started retouching, then I realized how many settings there was and then how many different ways there was to do things. And I realized how hard it was to go through the menus, set up keyboard shortcuts, uh, record actions or maybe even try and find some actions online which I never did um, besides just basic basic um, and then I tried to create my own actions with a little bit of logic and it was impossible and I was not happy at all so then a little bit reluctantly, I decided to combine um, my profession, which at, at the time was a full-time uh, professional software developer, which in a way it still is, but um, mostly focusing on retouching nowadays and teaching it, retouching. Uh, So then what I did is a lot of research as, like I said, and I started creating scripts instead of actions. And with scripts, you could actually have logic. And logic is very important because there's many small decisions that can be automated uh, in a proper workflow that you can't do with actions. If you were to do it with actions, then you would need hundreds of them. And I know people who have 500 actions and I have no idea how they can find anything with that many. So after I started to create a bunch of scripts, I started to realize I wanted a good way to um, organize them. Because then uh, at the very beginning, I was 
linking actions to run scripts and then just deleting all the other actions. But that also became a little bit messy because you couldn't rearrange and put things in the order of the workflow that I wanted. Um, so then I uh, found out that you could create panels and put buttons on panels that link to scripts. So then I created Retouching Toolkit 1.0, which was very, very basic compared to what we have today. But it uh, really helped me a lot in becoming a much better retoucher. Uh, also because I had to research a lot of stuff and ask people for advice. Um, and then I started to sell it eventually and it became very popular. And then um, as I grew as a person and became a better retoucher and learned more, I'm a quite technical person. I don't work with retouching uh, full time. Um, I like to focus on the techniques instead of working for clients. Um, but I do a lot of uh, workshops and I do teach a lot of really, really good retouchers. Um, So then, after a while, I decided, why not try this full time? Because I had this idea that, what if I created uh, a way where people uh, get the best of all techniques, but they can also customize it to their workflow? Because I realized uh, not everyone likes to work the exact same way, even though it's uh, mostly similar and if you don't know anything at all then um, don't try and make up your own workflow is my advice at least uh, try and follow one of the standard ones and I would say um, the way I have it set up is very very standard uh, at least at the higher level um, that's also why I never do any uh, special names on on my techniques. I it the name is the actual technique. Like um, you're not gonna ever find any magic teeth fix buttons on my panels because uh, to me retouching is the same. The basics is the same no matter what you're doing. It doesn't matter if you're fixing eyes, teeth, hair, whatever, clothes. There are shortcuts uh, to everything, um, but shortcuts usually mean a worse result. And sometimes it's okay to take shortcuts because you just can't spend the time. And Nowadays, I've included a lot of shortcuts that actually produce pretty good results, but it took a lot of time to research and find uh, shortcuts that actually didn't completely degrade your result. Um, but also in this new version, I've really, really spent time to try and uh, reinvent a lot of the old techniques. And I think I actually was successful with this because a lot of the stuff that's on this workflow panel has never been done before. And it's a lot better than what I've ever seen. And it's also what I keep hearing from everyone. Uh, but yes, that's the type of intro for this. I'm sorry. And uh, you had to listen to me ramble a little bit, but it's, it's a very dear panel. It's the whole reason why I went full time. It was a big step. And 
I'll catch you in the next video and then we'll dive into features of the panel, how you can use them and uh, feel free to give me suggestions what you want me to cover. So talk to you soon.